గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ మీ గో ఫార్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ మెకానిక్స్ సబ్జెక్ట్స్ బిఫోర్ దట్ వి వాంట్ టు నో అబౌట్ వాటస్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ ఈజ్ ద అప్లికేషన్ ఆఫ్ వేరియస్ సబ్జెక్ట్స్ లైక్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ సైన్స్ సోషల్ అండ్ ప్రాక్టికల్ నాలెడ్జ్ బై దిస్ ప్రాక్టికల్ నాలెడ్జ్ వి వాంట్ టు డిసైన్ అండ్ బిల్డ్ a new machines or a buildings for for the design, for the design purpose only we go for mechanics subjects mechanics is the study of behavior of body due to the action of external loads there are several types of mechanics are available under this there are main two classifications are available one is fluid mechanics another one is solid mechanics under the solid mechanics there are two types of mechanics are available one is statics another one is dynamics if we go for statics statics is a branch of engineering mechanics by this the study of behavior of body at rest position due to the external loads action bonus dynamics in this we go for we go for a study of behavior of a body in motion due to the external loads application under this dynamics two types of subdivision is available one is kinetics another one is kinematics the kinematics and the ki- if we go for kinematics kinematics is the study of behavior of body in motion but we consider the application of forces but we go for kinematics we won't consider the applied force which is the main difference of kinematics and kinematics first of all we want to know about what are the types of forces are available in engineering mechanics there are main forces coplanar forces and collinear forces coplanar concurrent forces coplanar non concurrent forces coplanar collinear forces if we consider coplanar concurrent forces we go for a triangle law method for to find out the resultant of the vectors for example if we take two forces for example a and b of two forces v represented the magnitude of two forces as the adjacent side of two triangle means the opposite side of the triangle which means the c side is the resultant of the two forces which this is the triangle law theorem uh, next one is parallelogram law forces here two forces acting at a point that means which is a concurrent forces concurrent force means the concurrent force means the two forces acting at the same point the two forces represented by the two sides of the parallelogram which whose diagonal is the resultant of the two forces is the parallelogram law of force. this is the diagrammatic representation of parallelogram law of forces here a and b are the two forces given we represent a and b or the two sides of parallelogram so the resultant of a and b is the diagonal of parallelogram this is the formula of the resultant force f or equal to square root of f square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta if we go for 
uh, angle incline of resultant force means that angle is assumed as alpha so tan alpha equal to f2 sin theta divided by f1 plus f2 cos theta next one is newton's first law if we go for newton's first law every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by force impressed on it which means if a object is go a uh, uniform motion go in a uniform motion its state is never change unless an external force applied on the object which is the newton's first law next one is newton's second law newton's second law defines about force equal to change of momentum with a change of time which means force is directly proportional to the change in mass if we consider a ball uh, egg for example we take a rubber ball another one is a iron ball an iron ball if we give a force a light force for a rubber ball but if a uh, more force given to the iron ball so force is directly proportional to mass with velocity this is the newton's second law we go for newton's third law obviously we all know about every action there is an equal and opposite reaction which is newton's third law next one we go for a unit fundamental unit and derived unit we know the fundamentals what is the fundamental units length mass and time these are the fundamental units with the help of these fundamental units we derived some units that units is called derived units for example length is a fundamental unit and breadth is a fundamental unit by the, the help of length and breadth we derived area area is the derived units next one fundamental units example length mass and time derived units means with the help of fundamental units we derived area velocity acceleration pressure this is units first of all we follow a four system of units cgs units fps units mks units finally we used a standard international units cgs means centimeter gram second system of units fps means foot pound second system mks means meter kilogram or second units si units means international system of units which we follow now for example units si units are some values density equal to kilogram per meter cube force equal to newton pressure equal to newton per meter squared work done equal to joule newton meter power in watts these are the some ex units then we go for a scalar quantities and vector quantities first scalar quantities scalar quantities means those quantities which have or which possess magnitude only is a scalar quantity like length mass time distance these are having only the magnitude only if we go for vector quantities we possess both the value of the force and also having the direction of the force the value is the magnitude and direction is the nature of direction both are having so it is vector quantity there are three type of vectors are present unit vector equal vector and like vector unit vector means whose magnitude which means whose value is 1 which is called unit vector equal vector is which are parallel to each other and have the same direction same direction is a equal vector and a like vector means 
the vectors which are parallel to each other and have the same sense but an equal magnitude. These are the diagrammatic representation of addition of vectors. For example, a problem we take on two forces of 100 Newton and 150 Newton are acting simultaneously at a point, which means it is a this is a concurrent force. What is the resultant of these two forces? If the angle between them is 45 degree, the angle is we go for a solution. First force F1 equal to 100 Newton, second force F2 equal to 150 Newton, then the theta equal to 45 degree. So now we determine the resultant of the two forces F1 and F2. Resultant equal to square root of F1 squared plus F2 squared plus 2 F1 F2 cos theta. Square root of 100 squared plus 150 squared plus 2 into 100 into 150 cos 45 degree. The final answer is 232 Newton is the resultant of the forces. Thank you.